Thanks for your kind words, uh, Ines. Can you see? Can you see me? My yeah. screen. My blank screen here. Perfect. Good. Good. Um, well, sorry, I didn't add data science, but but I I applies to everyone, so don't panic. How can I present in a way that I can see your faces? Um, because I want to know if you are if you have any questions. Because here, okay, let me. So Ines, if people have questions, you tell me. You are in charge of the chat. I will. I will. Okay, uh, because I want this. So I put this here, recording Ines. You know, okay, done. Um, I want this to be a conversation. I'm gonna give. I'm gonna talk a lot, and I can talk about this for hours. But uh, the idea is that I answer your questions, guys, and you take away things that you can implement and you can start doing tonight. Uh, so if you have any question during the presentation, please ask. And if, I, if I'm if i going to cover that question later in the presentation, I will tell you. And at the end, also, we'll have a Q&A session. But feel free to stop me and ask questions. OK. And little warning, I share my apartment with this guy, little guy. And sometimes he likes crushing my meetings. So he might appear behind here. Is, is my child. I have a three-year-old. And he likes... <laughs> um, you know, uh, fucking up my meetings. No, he's, he's, he's adorable. So just warning there. Who am I? Um, I'm a real career coach. Like Ines said, uh, this is what I do uh, for a living. And let me, I want to share a little bit of my experience with you because um, first of all, everyone loves talking about themselves. No. So because I want to tell you that I've transition a few times in my career and it's possible okay it can be done um it can be actually it is a very good thing and and i went from being an academic in tourism and climate change to do business development in on the other side of the world for an education startup but the most relevant transition for you guys is um, a few years ago, I for personal reasons i decided to move to canada i'm originally from spain Although, and I've been living overseas for the last 15 years. Uh, I was finally back in, in Madrid, my dream city. And for personal reasons, I decided to move back to, to, to move to Canada. And, and I started, uh, and I was already doing some career coaching on the side. I was taking my coaching certification. And I thought, okay, you know, I want to I wanna transition. I want to use this uh, change to also start my career as a career coach. But obviously, the uh, the sensible thing to do is to look for jobs as a business developer, and that's what I was doing before. And then, but I was very strategic in this transition, and I was looking for companies that were in the sectors that I knew uh, they could need sectors and companies that they would need a sort of career coach or like a, a learning and development coach, something like that, and. Three months in the job search, nothing, no calls, no interviews, crushing, awful. And I couldn't understand what was happening. Job applications, after job application, nothing, no calls. And Toronto is a very expensive city, so I was not happy. My bank account wasn't looking great. And, and then I decided to heavily rely on networking because I didn't know anybody in the city. Nobody was taking a chance on me, so I'm like, okay, this is the time I need to talk to people. And it was through these conversations that I found incredible roles. And I could, um, and I remember in one of the conversations, I was interviewing for a business development role and I was talking to the CEO and he mentioned that they were looking for a career coach. And I said, hang on a minute, forget about all of what I've said about business development. I, I am your career coach. You know, I, I can do this job and you know I'm working with clients already and doing this certification and give me 24 hours and I'm going to come up I'm going to bring you a plan for the next 2 weeks for the next 12 weeks for your students and you will see how I can do this job how I can be your career coach and that job was a, a, a general assembly which is basically 
the all women, but for everyone. Uh, they are a very big uh, boot camp school all over the world. And this one was in Toronto. And, and that's how I landed my job as a career coach uh, and General Assembly. I didn't have like experience formal experience as a career coach. It was me, you know, like looking for those opportunities and having those conversations that opened the doors for, for this new opportunity. And it was incredible. I was uh, coaching uh, hundreds of people like you, career, career changers who uh, wanted to become UX designers, developers, and then they added data science, marketing, everything. But by then I already left because I got an incredible opportunity to work uh, for Scotiabank. And uh, they sent me a very mysterious uh, message on LinkedIn and they said, Aurora, we're creating a new, we have a new project that we want to develop and we think you will be the perfect person to run this project. You wanna have a chat with us? And I'm like, of course, I wanna know what's going on. And what they had in mind, it was a program like the one that um, Facebook and Google had, uh, and they still have, is the associate product manager program where they wanted to hire recent graduates from all over the country, all over North America to, um, to become digital product owners on their role. They will hire this talent, they will put them through uh, six months rotations in different projects uh, across the the digital factory across the bank to learn the job. And then after a year and a half, they will own a team, a project, and they will be uh, product owners. So they offer me that uh, and, and I say, yes, of course, this sounds super interesting. I wanna do it and I have to take it from the ground. Like that was the idea. And together with my team, we developed the whole thing, you know, from like the rotations to the kind of people we wanted to hire. And I had a team of recruiters working with me, um, you know, going all over, looking for talent like you. And one of the first things I did when, when I started in this program, I said, we need to look beyond traditional education. You know, talent is not only in, in you know, Ivy League uh, universities. Uh, we need to look at boot camps. We need to look at colleges. There's more talent out there. And I'm very proud because we ended up hiring, uh, uh, you know, boot campers <laughs> like you and and i know these kind of programs are coming to to spain like i'm i'm sure because it just makes sense for companies it's it's cheaper because it's cheaper to hire someone keen eager and smart than uh, a senior developer who um you know who has his own way of doing things who I didn't always know how to manage a team and and doesn't have that multidisciplinary vision for, for a team. So bear with me, these kind of programs are gonna come to Spain. And I shared this with you for three reasons. Uh, one is because I've, I've done it myself, okay? Like all the things I'm gonna talk about, all the things I work with my clients, like I know exactly how you guys feel, okay? I've done it, I've done it enough times already. Also, I've been in in the hiring chair, you know, I have been the other person, like I know what they're looking for. I know what how you guys need to sell yourself. I know what, what kind of doors you need to knock on because like I've been the ones, um, I've been the one hiring. So you need to trust me. And the third reason is because now I'm like full-time career coach. I do this day in and day out, okay? So this is how the market work. We're gonna see today and Trust me, um, you will have tough weeks, tough days, tough nights, and that's part of the process and you need to keep going, okay? And you need to remember my face when you have uh, those tough nights and just keep going, okay? Oof. Okay, that was a mouthful about myself and I don't hear anything. You still there, guys? I don't see your faces, which yeah, is also very, yeah, very yeah, weird, yeah. very <laughs> weird, okay? Um, so today uh, I have a short pep talk for you. <laughs> We're gonna talk about your mindset a little bit. And then my idea is I want you guys to, um, after this presentation, to have uh, a strategy, you know, to have a very clear action steps that you need to take to help you with your job search. And we're gonna talk in detail about that. 
and LinkedIn, my friends, if you're not on LinkedIn, you need to open an account tonight because that's going to be uh, your friend all along. And we're going to talk briefly about interviews, some final thoughts and questions. Okay. So the secret, the magical secret to landing a job, ready? You need to hustle. You need to be confident, patient, and stay positive. Believe me, I know it's hard, but you need to go take action. Be there. Put yourself in front of people that have um, the position and the ability to uh, to impact positively in your career. Okay, things sometimes are not gonna work out the way you want. You need to be patient and you need to keep hustling and taking action and stay positive always. You have bad days. I do have bad days. But if you have an interview, you need to put those thoughts aside and you need to bring your best self to that interview, to that conversation, to that job application. So always stay positive in this journey. Uh, honor your bad days, but always, always try to stay positive. And some of my words, when you have a bad day, remember this shall pass. This is not going to last forever. And things are gonna get better. You are in the right industry. Like, believe me, I work with people from different industries every day and you guys are the lucky ones, you know? You are in the right industry at the right time because look, everything that is happening, this is a freaking digital revolution. Things are gonna change forever and you are in the right place at the right time. And hello, remote jobs and remote life. So, Again, like you need to focus on the, all the good things that are happening for you. And also you speak languages. Just this morning, I was talking to someone who was like very senior, like incredible experiences, like Aurora, all the jobs out there. I need to speak English for it. So I'm like, yeah, you better crack on with it because there's no other way. Okay, so focus on the good things. Focus on the good things. Also, this is... Uh, very a very very hard process transition for your mental health and you need to you need to do a lot of work on your mindset and on yourself and you need to believe in the new you you are now a product manager you're now a ux designer a data scientist and you need to believe that you need to start internalizing that um and surround yourself with people that gets you because it is hard and if you man if you are still surrounded by that old colleagues that they don't get what you're doing then it's time to maybe not hang out with them that much or i know if it's your family i know it's hard to cut ties with your family but maybe spend less time with them and more time with your new colleagues that old women and also media I mean, I will encourage you not to watch any news, especially now, because the last thing you need to know is to, to hear about how bad the job market is, how everything, everyone is losing their job, blah, blah, blah. Yes, yes. And believe me, every day I see people getting jobs. Every day I see people getting interviews. So whenever you are hearing that, switch on the Aurora channel on LinkedIn. So I can give you some positive uh, news. And the same with, with the content you consume, be very mindful, like listen to podcasts that are aligned with the new you, uh, with, uh, with your new sector, with your new career. Really, really be, be very conscious about this because this is gonna help you a lot through this. Meditate, exercise, do whatever you need to do to take care of yourself because it is a process and you need to be focused and you need to be okay inside. And then that, that's going to show you outside. Okay. On to the strategy. Ready? There are three things that you need to be doing when you are transitioning to um, a job in, in UX as a data science, a data scientist um, and PM. And it's every single week, you need to keep working on your portfolio, on your projects. Um, and we're gonna talk about each of these. 
you need to be sent in applications and you need to network. And there, trust me, if you do this every week consistently, you will get that job. Okay, every week you need to organize your week in such a way that you get to do these things every single week. On Sunday, when you look up at, back at your week, you think, okay, have I worked on my portfolio? Have I like um, get better at what I am now? Have I sent applications? Have I talked to new people every single week? And trust me, it will work. You will get that job. So let's start with applications. But before we talk about applications, networking is really important because I want you to, if you don't know this, uh, I'm going to tell you now, but most jobs are not advertised, okay? So 80% of jobs are in the hidden job market. So that's also one of the reasons you need to be networking. But for that 20% of jobs that get out there, you need to apply for them. And, and it's really important that for you, because you are transitioning, you know, you are, you were before you were something and now you are something new, someone new. So you do need a cover letter. You need to do not send applications without a cover letter. Okay. In that cover letter, you need to tell me a little bit about your stories. Like I'm a former, whatever, academic, turn business developer that knows what is to whatever and you in that application you need to show why you're passionate about the product and the company because that's what companies want they get tons of applications and they all look the same trust me i've been there i've been reading hundreds of applications i know man like they are all the same they don't tell me why what they can do for me for my for for my program for that role are you gonna why are you interested in this product in this company you know why are you applying to my company and not my neighbor's company and i strongly recommend you to create a project for them and this goes back to the portfolio you can start creating projects based on the applications that you're sending and that's going to help you to uh, improve your skills your new skills at the same time that you create something tangible. You know, you're, you're telling me that you know how to design X. Uh, okay, show me. You know, you're telling me that you want this role as a PM because you're very good at um, uh, managing the backlog and, and prioritizing the backlog and all of that. Show me how you do that. Um, so create a project for them. And also, contact the recruiter, someone that works in the company, your potential boss on LinkedIn and tell them like, hey, you know, I'm super interested in this company. I send my applications. Um, I would love for you to whatever. So don't be afraid. You've sent the application. You've you've done a good job. You know, you are genuinely uh, interested in this product and this company. Tell them. Honestly, there's nothing to lose. And when applying for jobs, I don't know if you can hear if you can see it, but we need to be a little bit like Kanye's. I don't know if you've heard the latest Kanye's announcement, but he wants to run for president. Um, and you know, and I love this tweet from uh, from Amber Benson, who who says that like Kanye's announcement is a great reminder that men look at a job description and think, "Hey, I'm not remotely qualified, but I think I could do that." So apply for all the jobs, women. I see this with women all the time. You know, they're like, oh no, but I, I would love to work here. I, I know I can do this job, but they ask for X, Y, Z. Like, come on guys, like a letter is, a, a job description is like a letter to Santa Claus. You know, they ask for everything and it's impossible to like qualify 100% for, the, for what they ask. So if you think you can, like if you read a job description and you think I can do 70% of the job, Max, send it, send it. But go back here, like do a good application, you know, send them a good application. Don't just say like, oh, Aurora told me to send a, a CV, so I'm just gonna do it. So please, you know, work on your application. And the beauty of projects, of doing a project uh, for, uh, for a job uh, application, it helps you practice your skills. 
uh, it's a way for you to show, to demonstrate that you have the skills that you say you do in your resume, in your LinkedIn. Um, and also you can add that project to your portfolio. You can create a website, you can do it on LinkedIn. Uh, we're gonna see that in a minute. And you can start adding those projects to, um, to your portfolio. And it doesn't matter, I make my clients do this. And, and I have people like from very different backgrounds, you know, marketing, finance, and, and these projects can have a very different, um, you know, there can be a presentation about how, like what I did for, for this career coaching job, what I put, I put together a deck, uh, 12 weeks, every week I, I talk about what I would, uh, I would do, you know, the workshop I would do with the students on career, uh, on job search. Some of my students, some of my clients, they, they maybe, they might do like a financial report based on the information they've gathered and um, the things that the company needs to improve or they need to work on or they need to focus based on the trends. So don't think, oh, I'm a data scientist. I don't know what, like there are ways you need to be creative, okay?